back to another session in dentistry and more. Today we'll be seeing a small topic from oral pathology or oral medicine that is pulp polyp. So pulp polyp. So there are two types of polyp actually. Uh, one is gingival polyp and pulp polyp. So gingival polyp, as the name uh, indicates, it starts from the gingiva and similar with the pulp. So pulp polyp. Uh, it is also known as proliferative pulpitis or chronic uh, hyperplastic chronic hyperplastic pulpitis okay its nature is chronic and it is hyperplastic okay overgrowth and inflammation of the pulp sorry so that is chronic hyperplastic pulpitis it is chronic in nature it is overgrowth of uh, cells with reaction to the inflammation of pulp so it is a irreversible type of pulpitis so it always seen on tooth with extensive caries exposure and mostly on the young pulp okay mostly on the young pulp that is recently erupted tooth which is one to two years of age so in those cases we can see the pulp polyp and resulting from a long standing and low grade irritation okay so there will be a long standing that is why this chronic nature is there chronic nature okay long standing and low grade it is not a high grade infection very low grade infection which results in granulation tissue so what are the causes of uh, pulp polyp so mostly it could be due to caries that is a large open cavity okay so caries will be like large open cavity and a fractured tooth causing uh, trauma or the dental caries in uh, young resistant pulp and also it could be due to the mechanical irritation of chewing and bacterial infection okay. so what are the symptoms so mostly the pulp polyp is asymptomatic it will not show any symptoms okay but uh, masticatory stress can lead to some kind of tenderness it is due to the mastication now localized bleeding mostly it is asymptomatic okay and its appearance is pinkish swollen tissue okay mostly it will be a pinkish one and it will be inflamed and swollen tissue mass so the differential diagnosis uh, we can say the proliferating gingival tissue okay proliferating gingival tissue will be the differential diagnosis so the treatment options so how do we treat pulp polyp the first thing is uh, elimination of the polypoid tissue uh, followed by first we need to eliminate the polypoid tissue followed by uh, extirpation of the pulp provided tooth can be restored so this should be removed with a periodontal curette or spoon excavator so we can use a periodontal curette or spoon excavator sometimes bleeding will be there but it can be controlled by pressure so the pulp tissue of the chamber is then completely removed and temporary dressing is sealed in and contact uh, with the completed radicular pulp tissues so we are not removing the radicular pulp tissue at the first uh, sitting uh, whereas the radicular uh, pulp can be uh, removed on the second sitting okay first uh, we are uh, curating all the pulp tissue polypoid tissue and the coronal part of the uh, granulation tissue and then we are placing a temporary dressing and uh, we are sending back the patient and in the second visit we can remove the radicular pulp and if uh, we have time we can do pulpectomy okay if we don't have time because if the radicular pulp removal taking lot of time means we can keep it for the next sitting the pulpectomy can be done on the third sitting okay so this radicular pulp removal is done on second setting 
and this temporary filling process will be done on the first sitting so that's how we manage a uh, pulp polyp uh, so that was all about uh, pulp polyp it's a very small topic from uh, oral pathology it is very commonly asked a uh, short note for university exam so you can write about uh, its causes uh, its introduction part uh, its symptoms its appearance its differential diagnosis and its treatment part the first second and third sitting and uh, you can just differentiate between the uh, pulp polyp and the chinchaval polyp so i'll come up with a new topic in the industry and more thank you